everyone. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lola Clova. If you've never watched my videos before, then welcome. I teach all things beauty, permanent makeup, and business. If you've already been here, then welcome back. As you guys may know, I specialize in permanent makeup, particularly in microblading and ombre powders. Those are my specialties. And I've gained so much knowledge in these five years that I love to teach, which is why you're here looking at these videos today. But I also offer online courses and the two methods that I specialize in. Each course is designed for complete new beginners or people who have already taken one or two courses but just don't feel confident enough yet each course contains over 72 lessons and each lesson has a written component and a video component some people like to read and learn some people like to watch and learn so i'm going to teach you everything from skin to color to clients to marketing and literally everything under the moon you can be ready to start and you'll go from zero to a hundred the courses come with or without kits so if you choose i can send you everything that you need to start doing the procedure and just a reminder that we only only ever get five star reviews for our courses because i designed it with you and my Mind. I was you, I am you, and I only want to give you information that's going to be valuable and that will actually lead you to success. So please check that out for yourself in the link in bio. All right, so moving on to our video, how you can open a salon. I wanted to make this video because when I opened my salon, I couldn't find any videos on YouTube or anywhere really that gave me honest information and clear information as to what I need to do, how I can do it, and how I can get started. This particular video is going to be intended for all beauty professionals, not just just permanent makeup if you want to open a hair salon a nail salon a makeup salon or just a salon in general then it will probably apply to your conditions because opening a salon is pretty much along the same lines for whatever you're trying to do with exception to small variances in between so let's get started so the first thing is i just want to say that i'm assuming that you already have a business you have registered your business with your state or with your city or whatever the case is from wherever you have to apply please already go and do that because obviously you can't go and get a salon if you don't have an operating business. I'm assuming that you already have that or that you will figure that out eventually and then you will move on to the step of opening an actual establishment, an actual brick and mortar. The first thing to do is acquire a space. Obviously, if you're looking to open a salon, you want to open a physical location and this location is super duper important with a few factors in mind. There's gonna be a ton of options for you to choose from and when making the decision to choose a particular spot, there's gonna be a few things that you have to think about. First thing is you need to acquire a place that's going to suit your needs. So you need to decide if you're going to have employees or if it's just going to be you. In my case, it was just me. I didn't have employees. I didn't want employees because I prefer to work alone and work on my own. Although I would have loved to have a team, I really didn't really want to go into that just yet. And if this is you, this is totally okay. But if you also want to expand and have employees or if you already have employees lined up, then this is also perfectly fine as well. You just need to bear in mind the space you'll need for employees plus yourself. If you're at a place where you might hire people then probably go with somewhere in between not too big of a space and not too small of a space so that you can have the option to expand but if you didn't you would still be okay to kind of use that space on your own the second thing that's really important is location and parking so location should be something where you don't have to be dead center in the city you don't have to be in the most prime prime area of the city because usually what comes with that is a high price tag you really don't have to be in the super center of the city i find that even sometimes for clients this is actually more more inconvenient because parking becomes an issue and accessibility becomes an issue unless they're right there they really don't want to travel somewhere with high congested traffic and really complicated parking you can look for something that's slightly outside while still being accessible so as long as the location you're looking at is easily accessible by the highway or the freeway or public transit there is clear concise roads that lead you straight to your store then that's gonna be the best option keep in mind not to be too far outside just to save you know on your rent or on your overhead because you also still want people to look at your location on the map and be like you know what yeah it's about 20 minutes 25 minutes but it's not so far out of my way you want to choose a location that's going to be around 20 to 25 minutes on average at the most from a few different cities around you if this is a city over here don't be basing yourself somewhere so far out you want to be somewhere in the middle where you can accommodate people in the city but you can also accommodate people who are in the suburbs or outside the city and the cities around the region kind of be accessible to everyone in that area you should always have access to freeways highways public transit systems so that you can accommodate pretty much everyone. Parking is really, really important. Nobody wants to go to an establishment where parking is going to be a headache. I personally get stressed ahead of time if I know I'm not going to find parking because it just makes it so much more difficult to go there. So thinking of the fact that most people are drivers today, you want to keep parking ability in mind. If you find a place and the parking is not 100%, then that could be a, a negotiating factor for you or kind of like a make or break factor. I personally want when my clients come, parking to be right then and there. And even if it's 
paid somewhere that's not too difficult to get into. Try to keep in mind the limit on parking. Place you're going to offers you a certain amount of parking spaces. Make sure that's suitable for however many people are going to be working in the salon at one given time so that each person, if they have one client each, they could still have adequate parking spaces for all of their clients. My last tip, the biggest tip I can give for you is try to find an existing salon. I don't know if you guys know this, but opening a salon and putting in the necessary plumbing, putting in the necessary infrastructure to be able to withstand the services that you offer and the guidelines that the city has for salons, it's usually gonna be a pretty penny to get those installed. If you're just starting out and this is your first salon ever and you don't have a huge budget, then what I highly recommend you do is look for a place that used to be a salon or some sort of establishment where the plumbing is already in there. And I keep mentioning plumbing because we are in the health industry, we are in the beauty industry, which means that we have to be very careful with how we maintain our environment and how we sanitize our environment, which is where plumbing comes in. You need to have sinks available. If you're gonna be doing a hair salon, you have to have hair basins. If you're gonna be doing nails, you have to have plumbing for pedicure stations. So all of these are really important in terms of plumbing and beauty salon. They usually go hand in hand together. My biggest advice to you, if this is your first salon ever, is try your best to find an existing old salon or a former salon, even if they're not 100% built out the way you like it, or if they have certain things in there that you're not gonna use, that's okay, you can work around with it. It's at least there for you to use if you needed it, as opposed to not having it and you having to build it out yourself, which can be really costly and really time consuming as well. Now. Let's say that you've done that first step, you've already gotten the space, you like your space, it suits all of your needs. Then the second thing to do would be to register with the city. This is different than registering your business as an LLC or a corporation or whatever the case. This is separate than that. You need to register and get a business license from the city where you basically go and tell the municipality, hey, I'm here, I'm opening a salon. My name is so-and-so, this is my business, this is what we're gonna be offering, and this is gonna be your address. Usually this is a fairly quick process in particular to permanent makeup for some cities you will also be required to get a tattoo license if they establish that permanent makeup is under the same umbrella as tattoo all this information will be available to you online quickly search up your city or call somebody at the city and find out what exactly you need to do to register your business with the city and what licenses you need to have before you start operating the third thing you're going to need to do is get your health pass most of the time most cities and states require that salons especially beauty salons that involve bodily fluids and keeping a sanitary environment for clients and to prevent spread of diseases. Usually they require you to have a health pass of some sort. Each city will have their own guidelines as to how this is done and conducted and how many times that they come and see you to get this pass. The next step after having your licenses is to apply for some sort of green pass, health pass, whatever needs to be conducted by the city to come check out your environment, see if you're suitable for conducting business, to have clients, to be able to guarantee the safety of clients and that you are doing your due diligence to prevent the spread of anything and to have proper sanitization, proper tools, proper disinfecting of environments in there so that you are able to operate as a salon. Again, this is different for every city and for every state. So this is also something that you can find online or by calling the city that you're in. So usually this is done every year. Without this, you really, really can't be operating and you shouldn't be operating. This is something that's super important. As long as you know that you're clean and you follow proper sanitization, you should not be worried about this. You should already be keeping a really clean environment anyway. So if you're scared at all, don't worry. They're not out to get you. They just want to make sure that the public public is safe coming to your establishment. If you don't know what exactly is required, usually they have pamphlets and they have information on their website or you know you can call them and find out exactly what they're looking for when they're doing these passes. So you can have this already ready in place and lined up so that you are following their code and you are also keeping a very healthy and clean environment for your clients as well. Now, once you've done all of this, then start looking into furniture and decor. I know that for me especially, when I think of having my own establishment, my own salon, I get super excited about the decor and how it's gonna look inside and what color scheme I'm gonna have and the furniture I'm gonna get and how I'm gonna style it. These are all really important, but at the same time, this is the very last of your worries. I want you to create a budget for yourself when you're doing this because it's really easy to get out of hand, you know, getting excited for your salon and overspending on things that aren't necessarily required for your salon. The reason why I want you to wait till the end is because you don't know what you're gonna need to spend on until you have all three of those already in place. Have your location 
location, you have your licenses and you have your health pass. Once you've done that, you can look at your space and say, you know what, for this section, I need something here. For this section, I need something there. And for this section, I need something here. And this could vary depending on the services that you're doing and also the licenses that you're under. Certain licenses may require to have certain things in your, in your establishment that you didn't know about. So wait until the end. Don't get too excited to buy all these cute couches and cute little things for your clients. I get it. It's fun, exciting, but you don't know what's going to come and hit you in the face, the fees and paying for all these licenses. So keep it till the very end because these are all very easy things to acquire. Whereas, you know, licenses and health passes and things like that are more important in my opinion. They're more urgent than buying cute furniture for your salon. Once you have all of that in place, then create a budget and try to stay under it. So if this is your first time opening a salon, try to find bargains on everything. Not necessarily used or broken items or anything like that. You know, if you're looking at furniture, go to the outlet, see where you can find good quality furniture that will do the job for now, that will still be under budget, not necessarily in your budget, but under your budget and that you can have wiggle room later on to update. When it comes to creating a waiting area, bed or lighting or TVs or anything that you really need, look for the best bargains on that. It's not all about having the most expensive thing. People are gonna come not for the couch that's in there, but for you and your services. They're not gonna come and look at the chandelier. While that might be a nice thing, people are coming to you and to your services and to be able to be around you and your skill, not for the painting that's on the walls. Keep your costs low in the beginning as much as you can because there's gonna be things that you didn't know you would have to pay for until you were in that position. And the worst thing to be is you've already bought all the furniture and it doesn't fit your space or you've overspent and you have no more money left for the actual important things of opening a salon. If you're looking at decor and you're adding things to your car, ask yourself if you really, really, really need that to do your services. Otherwise you can't have clients. If it's a no, then most likely put it away for now. This will benefit you in two ways. A, you can just have the basic stuff for now, make some money, you know, get accustomed to your space, see what you really need, and then update later according to that. Because some things can work out really well in your head, but then in reality, that couch or that bed may not work out for you as well as you thought. So this is gonna give you an option to upgrade yourself to newer furniture or to better environments later on, knowing exactly what you need. All of this is gonna come from your experience. And B, you'll have made the money back on the cost that you spent acquiring the salon and opening the salon. And then at that point in time, with that extra money that you have, you acquired from your services that you've offered in the salon, then you can say, you know what? It's time to upgrade. I've made all my money back. I'm not in a deficient state anymore. I'm not at a loss. So at this point, if I want to upgrade my salon, I can. Also, when you first get your salon, you're gonna be so excited to just fill it with things in there that later on, six months to a year down the line, when you're gonna see something and you're gonna say, you know what? I wish I would have waited and I would have gotten that instead. That is so much cuter. That is so much nicer. That is so much more advanced. There's gonna be times when you shop around later on that you're gonna want something else of something that you already have and you'll have the option to do that. Hold back on spending everything for your salon in the beginning. Do the very bare minimum. Keep it clean, keep it nice looking and have a nice warm ambiance for your clients. Don't overspend because there are gonna be costs that you incur without knowing, without realizing that you have to pay for and also your space may turn out to be different than what you had in mind. That's my my personal opinion from my experience. I hope this information has helped you guys because honestly, when I was starting my salon or when I was opening my salon, I couldn't find this information anywhere and I literally had to learn everything from experience. All of the things that I mentioned to you can vary for you. There may be other steps that you have to take. So don't take everything that I say to 100% validity. Do your own research, obviously, but I hope that my experience can help you kind of have a better idea as to what you need to do, what path you have to take to open your own establishment, which can be a really exciting thing, but also a really scary thing. If there is anything else you guys want to add, please leave them down below in the comments. I hope we can all help each other. If this video was helpful to you at all, and I hope that it was, then please like, comment, and share. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more videos coming up. I love you guys. Have a great day. Mwah. Bye.